afternoon, everyone. A galaxical uh, afternoon, I must say. We are at India-Russia Space Dialogue. And I am sitting right now with Lieutenant General Anil Kumar Bhatt, who is also the director for Director General for Indian Space Association. And he was here speaking at the panel. And uh, rest, I would like to know from you, sir, more about the space dialogue, more about your association with this event. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, the birth of my association, which I now lead, the, that is the Indian Space Association, started with the government's decision in June 2020 to open the space sector to private. This was a historical decision. And as they said, it was unshackling of the space. And I think it was the most appropriate time for the government to do it. A follow-up of that was that the Prime Minister advised the industry players in space in India to open this association, that they have a bridge with the government, and we also help in creating an ecosystem in India. We started with five members, our founder members, that is OneWeb, Larson and Tubro, Bharti Airtel, Walchand Industries, then we grew to Mapma India and also Alpha Design Technologies. And today, just in a matter of one, two, one and a half years, we have more than 60 members. And a larger part of our members are new startups. And these new startups are providing great opportunities in India. Uh, they are now part of what I call the space enterprise of India, led by ISRO, along with industry, startups, academia and everyone. Right. Sir, um, India with Russia uh, in, when we, when in terms of space, it's, it's a long back association, very long back. But uh, at current scenario where India stands in a neutral platform where the war is yes. going on, how this relation is building up? <coughs> now, uh, you know, throughout the day today, we've been discussing history of space and definitely. Yes. Russia has been a very strong partner. Always to us. Supported yeah. from our uh, sounding rockets yeah. to the launch of Bhaskara, the launch of Aryabhat, mm. and thereafter our cosmonaut yes. Rakesh Sharma. All has been done by Russia's support in the space domain, yes. even the cryogenic engine. Yes. And now with Gaganyan also, we do have linkages with ISRO and this. Now coming to the commercial space, actually in Russia there is a very small commercial space. They have not yet opened up commercial space to their private sector as we have taken a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are companies, but they are all, Roskumos is the mother company. Uh, but still, all our commercial companies which are going into upstream, downstream and midstream activities, we would look forward to any alignments with companies in Russia. Mm -hmm. Because space is for the world. And if we have uh, uh, companies in Russia which are good enough to work with us, share our technologies, mm -hmm. uh, get into business uh, models, why not? And I'm sure it will happen after some, after some time. Presently, Russia may be engaged in their own yeah. uh, commitments in the neighborhood. But soon they will come out of it. And uh, after that, definitely this will happen. Sir, so, uh, you talked about India opening up to commercialization, yes, in terms of space. That is more because of the space policy that yeah. our present policy makers have yeah. developed. So, sir, uh, through this policy, uh, space policy, what do you feel? There, every coin has both the sides, mm -hmm. good and bad. So, I would like to know from you, the, both the sides of this specific coin. So, uh, you know, actually I see it as a great opportunity. Hmm. Uh, and I should put it in terms of what has happened. Today we are only, though we are a space-faring nation, and there are only five big space-faring nations in the world, but if you see the economy, we are only 2.3% of the global economy. Deservingly, we have to have a larger share of the pie of global space economy. And that will happen as private space comes into it. So hmm. there is a lot of positive. Now, the concern could be strategic, yes. but we have we are in a new world. 
there was uh, i am a military man and traditionally one of the most important thing was to know what is happening on the other side of the hill mm. what is the information of the enemy but after space has come in everything is transparent you cannot hide something and you cannot stop uh, anybody satellite in the world mm. a friend or an enemy to see what is there we have to fight future battles knowing that the whole earth the whole place mm. is transparent right and you could have seen examples of that in the ukraine where war where private companies were taking out photographs of tanks and other movements and all so we have to change our secure security paradigm with the new challenges space will provide some challenges but in overall this opening up we have now more brains more energy which will work towards the security because the space domain has become very important domain in warfare also apart from land air and sea okay. space and cyber are two very critical structures where the nation has to move forward and this can not only happen with a government agency we have to use the power the strength and the capability of our private sector also exactly here sir when you said yes you are from the defense sector you have been from the defense so you understand these challenges that privatization or the new startups which come up yeah. and how they are they may endanger the uh, this close the close uh, balloon let's say the close parameters that used to have used to be with the defense in the defense sector so sir do you feel uh, we need some more uh, governing bodies or regulatory bodies to check these and some more uh, strong regulations to get hold of them again when we make these regulations they will again try to stop the development of these startups as you said i mean they need to be pushed further yeah. they need to give an up they, so, we need to give them a free hand sometimes. so there is always a challenge that security is important yes but is security at the cost of development mm -hmm. and here is where a right balance is required uh, the policies and in the future bill has to be made in that form that our basic security is not compromised mm -hmm. and that is why uh, the strategic domain and the domain of militarization which the nation may think of may not be where the defense sector where the private sector will have a role the private sector is going to have a role in dual use of technology that is communication in remote sensing which is called isr mm -hmm. and in pnt that is position navigation and timing that is navigation of vehicles and all these because the usage is both there in the civil sector growing by the day and in the military in sectors which are like anti satellite weapons uh, sectors of anti satellite satellites itself and the whole space uh, the domain of fighting a space war there i think it will be the it will be led by defense agencies mm -hmm. and it will be more controlled. right so this week has been more on space we recently uh, i mean as far recently concluded yeah. the 3d symposium of yeah. space we attended that and uh, many critical topics were taken up during that time again today when we are having this india defense india uh, russia uh, space dialogue uh, this aspect is again a very different from from the defense yeah. nothing defense has been yeah. taken up now so you in both these scenarios what is your take from both these uh, both these different very different kind of uh, talks and symposiums you that know, happened uh, the defense space symposium which happened hmm. and uh, has been where 75 challenges were discussed and that was the center of gravity yeah and uh, our intention and my intention to do that symposium was to bring the stakeholders in a common platform hmm. that is the army navy air force along with the private agency who are going to be the new suppliers mm -hmm. both to see each other's requirements yeah. strengths challenges and concerns because in space if we have to do forward it has to be a whole of nation approach and uh, the user that is the defense has to move along not only with isro not only with drdo but also with private players right finally one more question sir uh 
India is ready to collaborate, is still collaborating with Russia in terms of commercial space. Yeah. What about defense space? Are we oh, collaborating anything uh, with the Russia with the defense for the defense space? As I know, there are no collaborations of what I know. Okay. Uh, if there would be something at the level where it is con in the confidential domain, mm -hmm. I am not aware. But uh, as I know, I don't think so there is. Because uh, our entire program of ISRO has been uh, civilian led. And okay. there, there is a lot of collaboration. Okay. Finally, sir, today's program, this uh, special dialogue, the first time ever that has been uh, conducted here by Aviakul and the Russian Center. What is your uh, experience, your take in this? Uh, you about know, this dialogue? Uh, when we are looking at space, which is a common heritage of mankind, yeah. and like space does not belong to anyone, mm. it is a global heritage. We need to talk to each and every member, mm. and especially more importantly to a country like Russia, which some time back was the number two nation in space. In fact, at one time, they have led the space race when they had their first satellite, when they had their first man on space. A, a country of such importance in the space domain, we need to talk to them, both in the commercial sector and how space can be utilized, how this global co common can be used right. for the mankind. Right. And you see, uh, space is still a sector of cooperation Though even the Russian-Ukraine war is going on, you are aware that uh, in the spa in inter International Space Station, the damage done by the debris, mm. the astronauts have been brought back down with the help of an American uh, rocket, yeah. American space uh, launch yes. vehicle. Uh, so there is cooperation in this domain and ISS itself, the International Space Station is an example of it. Sir, I'm sure today you found a very different audience in this in this auditorium. How was interacting with these students, sir? You know, uh, I, because in I, general, I don't think you I, interact I, every day with the students I, here. I, but I agree with you, and I think it is very important. Uh, even uh, when ISPA was inaugurated, the Prime Minister said, "Out of the four pillars was preparing the next generation for yes. space." And I think this was a step forward here seeing those school children and talking to them and answering the queries, the concerns which are global yeah. environment, how do we do other things and all. It, it, it really was so nice that this future generation is interested in space. And I think these kind of events, they generate the interest in them, yeah, that they read more, yeah. they get to yes. know more and they are they have the urge to ask yeah. you. And that and is what where Avikul has done a excellent job of yes, sir. getting everybody to Definitely. My congratulations to them. Thank you so much, sir. It was lovely talking to you and got to know a lot more definitely. And in future, since now, I think space is the in thing. That's the in topic right now for us, for the media, for you, for, for the world. So we will be meeting further in many other such uh, space events. Yes. And I'll definitely will take your definitely. insights. Uh, any time and every time, anything you would like to know about private players yes. in space, <laughs> I am there to Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your time.